Tonight, Samsung shows off three new devices. Tesla finds a home for their Gigafactory. And Comcast is going to spin off some subscribers to a whole new company. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 164 for Wednesday, September 3rd, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN number two. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. You know, it was just a prototype at CES back in 2013. That was ages ago, but now Samsung has officially announced its curved OLED phone. It's the Galaxy Note Edge. The screen is unique in that on the right-hand side, it sort of slopes downward and wraps around. Other specs include a soft touch back, 16 megapixel camera, a heart rate monitor, a quad HD display, that's 2560 by 1440, even a 3.7 megapixel front-facing camera for all those low light selfies you want to take. The Note Edge is coming to AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint in the U.S. later this year. No official date or price point just yet. But if asymmetrically curved displays aren't really your thing, Samsung also announced the Galaxy Note 4, which is the 5.3-inch phablet, if you want to call it that, that comes with a stylus and otherwise has pretty much the same specs as that Note Edge. Couple versions. The Korean version will feature an octa-core Exynos 5433 chipset, which is a combo 1.9 gigahertz quad-core processor for heavier activities, and then a 1.3 gigahertz quad-core for littler stuff. In other markets, the Note 4 will have a 2.7 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 805 processor with a 600 megahertz Adreno 420 GPU. Yes. Both versions get three gigabytes of RAM, either 32 or 64 gigabytes of internal memory, and an option to add up to 64 gigabytes on a micro SD card. No word on pricing for this either, but the note will be available in October in white, black, gold, and pink. Oh, but that's not all. Samsung's also getting into the virtual reality space, a very hot space. The company announced the Gear VR at IFA 2014. Today, it's happening in Berlin, Germany. This is a headset with a removable front cover that the Samsung Note 4 slips into and then acts as the screen. So you've got adjustable lenses built into the headset, and now the Gear VR turns that note into a virtual reality experience. Now, Samsung is handling the hardware, but Oculus has actually partnered with the company on the software side. Samsung's also promising a consumer product this year with Gear VR. That's ahead of competitors like Sony and Google and even Oculus itself. There's no price just yet, but the company says it'll be available for purchase online and through select carriers. Okay, let's just go ahead and stick with the hardware theme for a few more minutes. Sony has just unveiled the Xperia Z3 Android device, basically the successor to the Z2 and not all that different. 5.2 inch, 1080p display, a 20.7 megapixel camera, waterproofing, but with a more rounded aluminum frame. Sony also threw in a wide angle 25 millimeter lens, extra high ISO, 12,800 light sensitivity. The Z3 adds Sony's audio upscaling technology, which improves the quality of compressed music and some digital noise canceling technology thrown in there too. Expect the Z3 this fall on T-Mobile and possible other carrier announcements to come. Oh, you know, who cares about phones anymore? Anyway, Sony also showed off two new wearables at IFA, the Smart Band Talk and the Smart Watch 3, the latter of which uses Google's Android Wear software rather than Sony's own watch software, which it was rumored to do. The SmartWatch 3 comes with a 1.6-inch 320 by 320 transflective display, GPS, and even a life logger app. It'll run you around $300. Meanwhile, Sony's Smart Band Talk comes with a curved 1.4 inch, 288 by 128 pixel e ink display for things like email notifications, plus a microphone and speaker for voice commands. It can also be used to handle calls over Bluetooth. The Smart Band Talk comes with an accelerometer and an altimeter and will cost around $210. In the wake of the celebrity photo leak over the weekend, 4chan, which is a site where many of these photos 
were posted and viewed, has just introduced an official DMCA policy. The policy registers a DMCA agent for 4chan, which helps to afford the site safe harbor protection under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. It's not yet listed in the numerical section of copyright.gov, but once it is, the designated agent becomes the point of contact for copyright complaints and DMCA notices when content owners believe that their ownership rights have been violated on 4chan. Sources tell CNBC that electric automaker Tesla will build its 5 billion lithium ion battery plant, also known as the Gigafactory, in Nevada. Nevada Governor Brian Sandoval will hold a news conference on Thursday in Carson City, Nevada, to make a, quote, major economic development announcement. This is according to a media advisory from the state. A Tesla spokesperson confirmed that Tesla officials would be at that event, but declined to give any more details. Back in July, the automaker had announced that it had partnered with Jap Japanese electronics firm Panasonic to build the 35 gigawatt cell factory and also said that it would announce additional partnerships in the coming months. Coming up on this show, a wearable circuit board fabric that you can watch. And up next, I'll chat with Elise Hu from NPR's All Tech Considered about Comcast's plan to spin off customers to a whole new company. But first, let's talk about growing your business. Perhaps you're hiring. If so, congratulations. But you want the best candidates. You know where to post your job to find those candidates. Posting your job in one place... Well, that's not the, yeah, you, 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 gotta, you gotta be all over the place. You gotta cast a wider net as possible. And then you don't have to wonder if there was a better applicant that just didn't see the one place that you posted the job. That's where ZipRecruiter comes in. ZipRecruiter posts to 50 plus job sites like Craigslist, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Does it all for you, all with a single click though. Post once. And then the qualified candidates kind of start rolling in through ZipRecruiter's interface, which is easy to use. You don't have to juggle emails or calls to your office. You can screen candidates right through ZipRecruiter, rate them, and then hire the right person as quickly as possible. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 200,000 businesses. Right now, our viewers and listeners of TN2 can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And thanks to ZipRecruiter for the support of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Elise Hu, reporter for NPR. Hello, Elise. Hello, Sarah. It's good to be with you. And how is it going in our nation's capital? Um, it's still sunny out. Uh, <laughs> I was just talking to you pre-show that it's a, it's almost nightfall. It's, <laughs> it's, it's uh, three hours ahead. So, of course, all is well. <laughs> um, it's just later. Good to know. Good to know that the future is bright, uh, at least in D.C. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this Comcast spinoff. Of course, Comcast and, and Time Warner Cable are trying to merge. They're getting some pushback from companies. What is Comcast spinning off here? So Comcast is, in order to get bigger, it is getting smaller, basically. Um, this is FCC bait because FCC, the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, based here in Washington, D.C., is in the process of reviewing um, Comcast's proposal to buy Time Warner Cable, a $45 billion deal that the two companies hope they can close before the end of 2014. However, there's a lot of different questions about whether this is going to be, uh, create a monopoly and further erode. Uh, competition that is essentially supposed to help consumers. And so Comcast has decided to spin off uh, lots of its customers in the Midwest, uh, including Michigan and the Southeast, states like Tennessee, uh, into a new company uh, in order to try and uh, help grease the wheels of this FCC deal, if you will. Okay, so the the subscribers that are now Comcast subscribers, if this ends up going through... They get spun into a new company. Okay, so then if the if the Comcast Time Warner deal goes through, what what happens to these subscribers? How many people are we talking about? We're talking about about nearly four million mm -hmm. um, customers. And what would happen is under this new spinoff, which today they've um, announced is called Great Land Connections, because Great Land, I guess, is supposed to uh, refer to the Midwest and the southeastern states that are part of this deal. Because they're um, just great. They're great. They're yeah. awesome. I, I, I love all the people <laughs> in Michigan. And so... Um, 
what's going to happen to them is they're going to be owned by Comcast shareholders and about 30% of the company goes to Charter Communications. Charter Communications is also a big cable company, but much smaller than Comcast and Time Warner. Charter is based in St. Louis, Missouri, and they um, are part owners of this Great Land Connections. And so again, this is all part of um, the bid to try and actually get bigger for Comcast to try, try and actually get bigger by acquiring Time Warner. But in order to avoid looking like they're going to bust the cap. So the mm. FCC typically has a cap of about 30% that no company can have more than 30% of the customer base, of the cable customer base in the country. So in order to do that, Comcast needed to shed customers. And in this spinoff, they're shedding nearly 4 million. Now, just call, call me a jaded Comcast subscriber because that's exactly what I am. But doesn't this sound like just moving a bunch of customers around? Are regulators fooled? Uh, you know, is, is this actually... Do you think this is actually going to be successful with the merger, which is obviously what time, uh, what uh, Comcast and Time Warner really want? That is a really good question, actually, because there is already so little competition when it comes to internet service providers and cable in this com uh, in this country that um, there are FCC regulators that are hip to that, obviously. But the big debate, of course, is whether the FCC cares, because um, so many regulators are actually former lobbyists who represented cable, for example, um, or uh, and I should say, in addition, the big cable. Comcast in particular, has tremendously powerful lobbyists on Capitol Hill here in D.C. And so um, they're very good at making their case and um, be, being convincing about that to regulators here. So how regulators will actually decide this um, is still an open question, but there's a lot of cynicism uh, here in D.C. at least that uh, even though, even though um, there's a lot of a lot of consumer concern about Comcast. And we've seen obviously that viral Comcast uh, customer call earlier this summer mm -hmm. um, that graded everyone. That whether that will actually make a difference to regulators is still a big question. There's a lot of skepticism about that. And do, do does, does Comcast get an out if regulators say, you know what, this merger with Time Warner Cable isn't going to go through. Would the new company still exist? Great land. That uh, you know what? That's an interesting question. Um, I don't know enough about the specifics of this deal, but so many people are betting on the fact that this deal is going to go through, that um, the spinoff company <laughs> is all but a done deal in, in the way that it's being reported now. Elise Hu reports for NPR and appears on Twig quite regularly. Thanks so much for joining us, Elise, and tell folks where they can keep up with your work. Thanks for having me. And you can follow me on Twitter at Elise W-H-O. And I blog at All Tech Considered at NPR.org. Thanks so much, Elise. Thank you. All right. Finally, we've been talking about wearable technology. Well, on this show, but we've kind of been talking about wearable technology, like the kind that you would wear, a shirt with a circuit board, pretty much forever. I don't know anybody who's wearing those, though. However, a team of engineers from Hong Kong Polytechnic University have created a fabric knitted with wiring that can be worn and even washed, and in theory, could host a variety of devices for biometric monitoring for someone, let's say, working in law enforcement or a military personnel. The researchers tested for durability by running the fabric through a million cycles of stretching and folding. Washing them in warm water had really good results, Perhaps even more impressive, though, to make sure that the material could meet the job requirements of a target audience in, say, law enforcement, they sewed pieces of the fabric and sensors into bulletproof vests and then shot bullets at those vests. Under the Kevlar, all the sensors were still able to receive and transmit electrical signals after being shot. Oh boy, I really want my circuit shirt. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. You know when it is. Tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. And I almost choked. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.